go. <coughs> okay. So let's continue and with surfacing. If you recall last Wednesday, I created the window in Photoshop and then in layers, I created masks, the little black and white, you know, por portions of it. No? You don't recall in Photoshop? Well, d yeah, David is. Okay, so you remember that part. Okay, so I'm in Modeler, and let's start by creating two surface textures. Because I've already built the images that I'm going to apply to them. So now I will, I'm going to start with just the, to show you what I'm doing here, just the very basic surface, or basic um, geometry. So we'll go ahead with a box, and I'm going to go ahead in Actions, I'll reset, activate, just boom, a simple box. That's it. Six sides, six polygons, no more, no less. And let's go ahead and um, create a new surface for it. So by hitting Q, I don't want this to be my default surface, and we'll name it Cube. Whoops. And because eventually I'm going to probably put, make it sort of tan color, you know, may put the wood on it or something. Maybe I'll make it a little bit more on the browner side here. Click OK. Now what I need to do is I need to, let me find my Z axis here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select one polygon. And this will be the polygon that I place the window. Remember, you can select each individual polygon and you can create a different surface for it. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'll name this surface or this one. I mean, I named the whole cube you know, or the, the surface for the entire cube, cube but I'm going to now, now I'm isolating this one polygon and I'll create a separate surface for it. So I'll go ahead and hit Q. And this one is going to be named Window. <coughs> and to make it, <coughs> I'll leave it, <coughs> I'm, to make it stand apart, I'm going to make it lighter just so I can see it. it you're not going to see it when we're done. But it's just for my own reference. Right now, remember these are placeholders, so I just need to be able to see color. And that's it. Okay, click OK, and there you can see how it changes that. And I'm going to do one more thing because remember I said one of the things I'm going to add to this when I make my window are transparent maps so you can actually see through. It's, it's, you get the same effect as actually cutting holes in the geometry, meaning if I were to remove this polygon here to actually see inside it, but without ch uh, changing any, any of the geometry, just um, <coughs> um, applying transparent maps or little will make it um, transparent. Well, it'll do just that. It'll make it basically invisible, you know, so you can see through it. But the advantage that I mentioned the other day is that it, it's editable. It's easy to ed easier to edit the surface map than it is if you change the geometry. It's much easier and it's less destructive. So th if you can do it this way, I strongly recommend it. I don't know what other people's opinions are, but as I mentioned, that friend of mine, Dallas Good, was the one who told me at Art Center, <coughs> if you can do it with, with maps, then that's the way you do it. You know, make your geometry simple, make whatever complex look you want with maps, and that's the better way to go. So that's what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to show you what I'm doing here, I'm going to create a separate layer here, and inside it I'm going to put a ball just so you can see what I'm doing in here. So let's go ahead and I want to reset. I'm going to activate so it's inside here. And I need to make it a little bit smaller here. So let's go to size under modify size and I'm going to have it from action center center of mouse and I'm going to have it reduce a little bit from here. So it's a little bit smaller in here, but it's big nonetheless. Q, make a different surface, and we'll have a nice, whoops. Um, we'll have a nice big red ball in here. We'll name it ball. This is what I do every semester, just so you can see. It could be anything in here, but the point is so you can actually see this in here. Okay? And I'll leave them as separate layers, and they really should be separate objects, but it doesn't matter. I'll save it. We'll move over to layout, because one of the thing, other things that I mentioned 
two lectures ago, I said that oftentimes in OpenGL, um, and even when you're using Viper, there's a lot of stuff that you really don't see that well until you actually do the final rendering. There are also a number of features that aren't available unless you're in layout for, for surfacing. If you want to use SAS Lite, um, if you want to use um, displacement maps, if you want to use, there's any number of things. And you just don't get to see it until you render it. So what the best place to do your final surfacing, or even some of your more complex surfacing, especially when you have to use image mapping or you want to see glow maps and things like that, you have to, have to be in layout. So I'm going to save my model, go send it over to layout, and then we can take a look at it and see. And, and as we go, build it, render it as we need it, use Viper if we need, if we can, and then you'll get a, a really detailed look. Of, of what what's going on here. So let me do file, save as, save object as. <coughs> and I'll save it on um, my desktop. Where did I do it here? Desktop. Remember I had my content and scenes, or objects rather. We'll name it um, cube with window. Okay, so I'm going to save it in there. And now, once it's saved, we can go ahead and we can send object to layout. And it should send both. And obviously, I can't see the ball because it's a solid cube. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do in here is I need to find the window surface texture, and I'm going to start to make changes to that. Okay, we're going to start to add the features, and I tend to go from general to specific. So the first thing I want to do on the window is apply that image of the window so I can get a sense of size, placement, and that sort of thing. And then the additional features, the bump maps, the transparent maps, all of that good stuff, I begin to layer inside it afterwards. And the more refined it gets, then the more layers you can add if you wish, okay, or fewer as needed. So with windows selected, I go ahead and I click T for texture. <coughs> and it asks me what kind of image map that I want. And layer type is, or what kind of layer type do I want? Image map, procedural, or gradient. We've used procedurals in the past. Those are the, the computer generated things. But for right now, anytime you apply something that's a photograph that you created in, in Photoshop or edited in Photoshop or gotten off the web, you're going to apply it as a, an image map. And what we'll begin to see now is all the layers that build over here on to the left within this single feature. Um, it's going to be a planar projection. And I know that it's going to be projected along the z-axis, but if you don't know the feature in here to determine which axis allows you to toggle back and forth and to get a pretty good idea of how it's going to look. How do you determine which axis, axis to place the map, the map, project the map? Okay, whatever, oftentimes by default the z-axis is the best one, but it doesn't always work. Depends on the orientation of your object. But think of it this way, for example, if you were building a floor and you have the y-axis up, correct? Then the floor would be the y-plane, wouldn't it? because the planes are always perpendicular to the axis that goes through them, that vertical axis that goes through them, correct? If I have <coughs> a plane that's parallel, for example, to the window here, that would mean that that's perpendicular to the z-axis, isn't it? So that's the z-plane, that's the one that that represents. And how you think about it, think about the floor, is if you're gonna pour paint on the floor, what axis is going through that plane, perpendicular to it? And that will let you know which one. It isn't always easy to tell, but you can toggle back and forth and you can find out. In, in, through guessing, easy enough. So I want it to be a planar projection because that's what it is as a plane. You can project planes on spheres, on cubes, on whatever, 
and if you're not sure sometimes on cylinders, you're going to have to experiment with it. But oftentimes, whatever the object most closely resembles is what the projection type is going to be. That is not always the case, though. Later on, I will show you how to use, in, in the semester near the end, more complex surfacing when we use front projection maps. Front projection maps are when the camera acts as a, a surface. Well, what it does is it projects the surface onto the, the object. Um, UV maps are also extremely useful. We will use those. They're used a lot for, for character, um, um, modeling characters for faces and that sort of thing. So we'll use UV maps. or It can be used for all sorts of things. They're used extensively for games and that sort of thing. So for right now, though, I need just a planar projection. And now I need to load the image. So if you save the images in the correct folder, which I haven't, I have it in my last semester's folder. So, but I'll, I'll find it. I'll go back on my desktop. And if I look, here's my window demo. Here are my images. Here is my window. And you'll see here, I have the window.tga. Right next to it is my window.psd. Remember I said you save your original, is the Photoshop document. And then when you save the individual elements or components of that image for LightWave, you save them as TGA files and or JPEGs. You might want to do both. <coughs> okay, I need the window image. And as I also mentioned, remember that that white area around here is a part of that projection. That's a part of the image. You might think, well, I mean, you focus on the window and forget about the fact that there's area around it that's going to be projected as well. But that's okay because we're going to create a stencil that will eliminate that part around it. And the other thing to remember that I mentioned too is that when you bring in an image, it can only be brought in as a square. All, all image maps are brought in as squares and they can be distorted and tweaked into vertical horizontal format. But when you bring them in, they can only be brought in as square, square images. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. And notice that when I bring it in, notice what it does to that plane. Notice it brings in the background as well. But what if I want the, the brown that I have applied to that to be revealed? That was my goal because remember I also wanted to apply wood <coughs> to that surface as well so it looks like a wood surface. But right now I would be happy if it looks like a painted surface and I just want that, w instead of seeing the white, to see the brown that I applied to that, um, that polygon to be revealed. So what I need to do now is I need to apply on another layer. Remember how I created a silhouette of the overall window image? That will be used as a stencil, like a cookie cutter, that will allow only the window to be revealed and it will hide the white area around it. So what I do, and I'm going to go ahead first. Notice that I was correct by using the z-axis. If I select y, notice it goes away. If I select x, I don't see anything. Z. I can also go ahead and make sure if I want this to repeat, I can. And I could actually, by resizing this, I could have multiple windows on here so it would look like a, um, a high-rise building. You know. But I'm going to reset each of these, and I'm going to click here on automatic sizing. The reason all of this works so nicely at the moment is because the preview that I'm using here is one meter. The size of my cube is one meter, so it fits nicely. But if you recall, when we go into options here, display options, we can reset the sample size, and we would need to rescale this accordingly if I were trying to place an image on an ant or on a huge, huge surface, you would have to rescale these accordingly. So it's easy to get lost and to think, well, I just don't see the right texture. And it could be just nothing more than the scale is wrong. What okay. is the preview option? The preview options is this right here under options. And I select sphere. I could select cube. And you can see how it looks similar to what I'm seeing here. Now, when you bring in the Z, uh huh. Z, 
it's not going to be on, you're not going to see this on the back because they only, only applied it to the one plane. Now, if I make this two-sided, two you will see it on the other side as well. If we were to go inside it and you would see it double-sided, you would see that on the other side as well. And you might have to think about that. That's when two-sided polygons would be probably more advantageous because what you see on the inside would actually be different than the outside. And on the two, mm -hmm. The back of this plane? I mean, the two. Okay, what about, there's the back. Yeah, but when you bring it in with the V, does that apply to both planes on the V or just? It, I'm, it, well, if I understand your question correctly, the reason it's working properly with the Z is because look at, that I've, I've thought about this and I'm aligning everything right now along the Z axis. So, this plane is perpendicular to this z-axis, so as I said, it's like pouring paint or pouring paint perpendicular to it, so that's why we use the z-axis. On this side, if I were to apply it over here, it would have to be the x-axis. And uh, the back one would be the z-axis as well. The top one would be the y-axis, the bottom one would be the y-axis. It's still the Z. If you wanted to apply a window to the back, it would be applied to the Z axis as well. Does it make a difference which side we put how you connect the other? Mm -mm. It knows. It knows how to do it. It might be reversed and you might have to flip the polygon so that it's right reading. But it, but it will be on the face. Yeah, it will be on the face because it knows what side the face is is pointing out outward. If we were to go on the inside of the cube right now, you wouldn't see anything because it's only a one-sided polygon. So maybe I should go back, you know, to the cube for a minute and make sure that it's double-sided so that when we make the window transparent that you actually see on the inside. Otherwise, it looks like nothing's there, like it's an expansive universe. But maybe you could do that too. Maybe when you look in a little peephole thing, it looks like you're looking out to this expansive entity. You know, there's nothing there. It's up to you. But if I think, yeah, Destin. Right. Oh, because because I only selected that one polygon. Yeah. The, window the window is, I only selected that one polygon to apply the surface. That's why it's not, but it would normally project on the back as well. Yes, if I, if I just said project it onto the cube right. and I resized it, it would project on the back as well. Yes, okay, if I understand, that, that's the question, yeah. right? Okay. That and change, yeah. Or just, you know, if you only want the surface to be applied to s in a certain area, just select those polygons and deal with that. Or in another instance, when we get to the UV maps, then we will deal with that in another in another way to be able to, because what we're trying to do is to carefully place where we want images to go. That's the whole point of this. Otherwise, they just sort of appear to randomly stretch around this object and it's like, oh my God, sometimes they look good and if they're kind of generic, like a color or a texture that repeats, it doesn't matter a whole lot, oftentimes. But when it's a recognizable image like this, if it's you know rotated halfway up the wall and atop the window or something, it looks kind of bizarre, you know, or I don't know. So that's what we're trying to do is control the size, placement um, of how the, the map sits on the, you know, this surface sits on the polygon. Let's go back to the window, <coughs> okay? And let's go back inside this texture. And the next step will, as I said, is that I want to cut away the white part. So this is how I do it. We go up here and I say I want to add a layer. And it's going to be an image map. You can always change these to procedurals, or gradient maps, whatever you want, but I want another one. And you'll notice it sits right atop the window. You see where it says none? I have window TGA and above it right now is another layer that says none. 
meaning there's no image selected just yet. Okay, I want planar projection again. Select the image. I'm going to go ahead and load the image. I'm not going to use the image of the window. This is where I use my cookie cutter images. I want the window silhouette. The black is going to cut a hole through this. So I click open. And you'll notice what it does. It actually removed the window. It didn't remove the white because it's the, the black is what does the cutting. It cuts away. But actually, it's not cutting anything away at the moment because I have it set to normal. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this from a normal because you can stack one on top of one another and you're going to be switching back and forth from normal layers to the other blending mode, which is alpha. Alpha is, is what allows you, if, you, if you're familiar with Photoshop, is like using channels, like selections, to create those alpha channels that allow you to make certain parts of images visible and other parts hidden. So if I select that, notice what it does. In the preview, it makes the back, or instead of the window, it's not visible, but what did it do? It cut through the image, and I can see the wall, can I? Well, I don't want that. I want just the opposite. So now what I'll do with this selected is I'm going to invert layer and watch what happens. Notice that all the white around the image goes away except for the window, and the window remains. If we look here in OpenGL, it doesn't look like much, does it? So the only thing I can do, and this is something you're going to have to do repeatedly, is I can try to use Viper. So let's go to Render and see what we get here. But I have to, uh, so I'll enable Viper, and I'm going to put up the Viper window. And if I click Render now, it's not going to do anything. Because in order to use Viper, if you recall from my first lecture, you have to do a rendering first. So I'll go ahead and look at Render Options here. I don't need anti-alias turned on or anything because we're, we're going to have to do lots of renders. So this, these are just tests. Um, so with renders selected, let's look at render options. I do want ray trace shadows and transparency and everything because I will forget to turn these on and off. Let's come down here to render frame. And you can see from camera view, and that's good for us right now, that now that white, er, the white is hidden and just the window is revealed. So it looks like a sticker on the side of a wall, doesn't it? Let's go ahead and click here. And you can see that in, in Viper, this is helping us right now. This allows us to actually see what we're doing to update. So we don't have to continually re-render this thing. But sometimes when you make significant changes, we're going to have to re-render anyway. Because it captured only a certain amount of data. And if I, as soon as I add transparency to the windows, it probably won't help us. So we're going to have to re-render it, and then we can change it. Okay, so <clears throat> I've added that. Let's go ahead and add, since I said let's add transparency to the windows, let's go to ahead and do that, see that we can see through it. So let's add transparency. That means we need to add a transparent map and we're going to use the texture map for that. Right now, transparency is set to zero, but that's OK. okay. I'm going to go ahead and click on here. <coughs> and I'm going to import the image. And I have to ask myself, when I import the image, what do I want to be transparent? Okay, I only want the window panes to be transparent, don't I? So I created, if you remember in Photoshop, I created a black and white image of just those panes. So I want planar projection. I go to image. Let's go to load image. And I'm going to select window panes, TGA. And I click open. And oh my, look at that. It made everything else transparent, and it made that opaque. So what do I need to do? Invert it. Okay. Now I don't want it 100% opaque. So from in here we have layer opacity and we have transparency opacity in here. 
So in here, if I dial this back a little bit, notice how it's allowing part of this to be revealed a little bit. Notice how you see a little bit of that blue tint. But I don't see the ball in there, do I? If I re-render it, I don't, still don't see the ball. So how do you know that this is transparent? That, this is one of the downsides of Viper, that it didn't capture that data. So I have to come back in here and re-render the frame to test it. And oh, lo and behold, I cut a hole in there by adding the transparent mat. I can see through there now, can't I? That's what transparent maps can do. You can add as many of them as you want to anything you want, and it will change the geometry like you wouldn't believe. And it's better than just selecting polygons and deleting them. Because later on, if I decide, you know what, I don't want that window. I want to remove it, or I want to resize it. It's very easy to do. If I had changed the geometry and used Boolean modeling or done some other way and actually deleted it and built the window in there, it would have been much harder much harder to, to change. I'd have to go back and rebuild and that could take a long time. This takes much, much less time. Is everybody seeing the wisdom in that? I hope so. Well, one of the next things that we can do now and is to render here. And you know what? It isn't even showing that. So for, for my, from my point of view, Viper right now is sort of worthless. If I can't see any more than that. I already rendered it. I'm re-rendering it and I can't see the transparency in there. It won't allow me to see it. So this doesn't help me anymore. So the people at Lightwave, you know, um, the Viper is a nice thought, but for a lot of things it doesn't help us right now. I wanted to point that out because if you were using Viper or you're looking at it, at it only in OpenGL, um, you could be thinking to yourself, everything I'm doing is failing. It's not working. How do I know? The way to do it the way to know, to know if it's working is to do a simple test render. That's what you have to do. And make sure that you have shadows turned on, make sure you have transparency turned on, make sure you have re reflections turned on, or you won't see those either. Because you can turn on and off all of those features. Okay, one of the next things that we can do in here. Let's go ahead and let's add a bump map because I want Right now, it looks like the window is painted on. I want it to look like the frame actually projects, sits out from the wall. Well, to make it do that, we need something called a bump map. So we have the bump maps down here. We'll see we have reflection maps. We're going to add one of those. We have a bump map. We can actually add a couple of these. The first one is going to be for the the frame. So I click here for T for frame. <coughs> I just want this particular layer to be um, planar along the z-axis, the same as the others. Normal layer, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load that. So I'm going to, the one that I need to load image is the um, window frame. Because this is the part that I want to be bumpy, that I want it to be project from the image. So I click open, okay, and you can begin to see a little change in here, but it's not much. I don't want it to repeat. I'm going to reset. I didn't do that for the other one. Reset, and I automatic sizing. It's important that every time you add one of these on a different layer, on a different feature, they all need to be sized the same or they won't match up. You know, it's like trying to match. If I had a whole, if I had 10 hands here, they all have to be the same size, the same placement, so that they all line up. That's what these are doing. <coughs> now, as far as texture amplitude, I have it set to one. I'm going to crank that up a bit and really exaggerate it, maybe go to four or five. And you can see that it changed a little bit here. So once again, though, you don't see it that well in the preview mode here. And I wouldn't see it that well in Viper, so I'm just going to go ahead and render the frame again. And you probably won't see it that well here either because I need to probably rotate it a little bit so you can actually see it project because we're looking at it frontally. So that might be another good thing. Let's go ahead and switch from perspective to camera view. And let's go ahead and move our camera. 
Let's hit T for move. Make sure that camera is selected. Pull down the command key or right click and I'm going to move it up a little bit so I can see the little bit of the top a little. I'm going to go ahead and hit command. I'm going to hit Y and I'm going to go ahead and rotate the camera a bit over so I see more of a three quarter view. Hit T again to move the camera a little bit. <coughs> and maybe let's go ahead and hit Y to rotate down a little. That looks pretty good. Hit T again to zoom in a little. Because I want to see if I can if I actually see the projected. Notice that it or the, the bump. Notice that it doesn't look any different here in OpenGL. Nothing. Let's go ahead and render it. Let's see, we'll see something a bit different. Notice that it actually looks like it's sitting out a little bit now. See how it looks like it's sitting out a little bit? You begin to see the shadows just a little bit. Not terribly good because remember I don't have I have anti I don't have any anti-aliasing turned on. Also notice how the light is allowed to shine through and this window is casting a shadow in there and the ball is casting a shadow. So it, it's pretty cool. I should probably come back and make the amplitude a little bit more. I'll make it five. Five, five, five. And we'll leave that alone. Okay. Probably should do one more quick one render, see how it looks a little different. Uh, I probably pretty much re reached the limit of that. So that looks pretty good though. Now what if I wanted the frame to look like it was made of wood? I could go ahead and I could apply a wood texture and I could use that, that same frame map again so that it reveals just the image through that frame if I want and I could move it around. I'm going to leave it painted like that. I could have done it in Photoshop too if I was happy with that. Applied a wood surface to that and that would have been adequate. You doing it here in, um, in Lightwave, it will get a little bit more complex. Um, what should I do next? Let's go ahead and let's make the windows look too perfect. They look like plastic windows, something if you were going to get in a dollhouse or something, you know. And that would be fine. If that's what we were creating, then that's all we need. What if, on the other hand, <coughs> we wanted to apply a bump to it that made it look like it was ripply? So it looked like it was old. It looks, looks like it, especially on a large pane of glass, it had a slight wave to it where it would catch light and it would be reflective and it would look really pretty good. Then what we need to do is we need to apply something called, <coughs> an, I mean, it will be another bump in order to look ripply. It needs it to be another bump map. So in our bump selection, we're going to create another one now. Now, since I've already sized this one, I'm going to go ahead and do this again. So I'm going to go ahead and copy. I can select selected layers or all layers. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to go ahead and paste. And I want to add to layers, not replace all layers. And it adds it to the top. But instead of the frame, I want to use the panes. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to select window panes. And what this serves to be at the moment, or that what this will be, is a cookie cutter in a minute. Probably what I should have done first is to brought in is to bring in my bump. So let me go back in, because this is going to be an alpha in a minute. Let me go ahead and change it now. Blending mode will be alpha because I only want the bumpiness to be applied to the panes nowhere else. So now I need to go ahead and add another layer. So if I want Whoops, yeah, let me take this layer and remove layer. Select this one. I'm going to copy selected layer, and I'm going to add, um, whoops, I'm going to paste, and I'm going to go ahead and um, add to layers. So I have another one here. Instead of this, though, instead of image, I'm going to use something different. I'm going to say none, and instead of image map, I'm going to select a procedural texture. 
and it's going to be, I'm just going to leave, um, this is turbulence, and I'm going to leave it this size for a moment and see what it does. Okay, now look at what's going on here. I'm going to select turbulence. I don't want it alpha. I want it to be normal. Underneath it, though, I want it to be alpha because it will only, actually, i got to move this one up. I'm sorry. I want the alpha to be up here because what that does is it allows only certain parts to go through and affect the underside here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off repeat, reset, reset. I'm going to use auto sizing. I'm curious to see what this is going to look like. I'm going to render this again. Oh my, I blew it. And this is what you're going to, it looks like the whole thing has been crumpled like a tin can. Okay, so I blew it. So let's see what I did here. I crumpled the whole thing. I want the alpha, I believe. Let me go ahead and change the turbulence to above here. And then let's render it again and see if I, let's do it right this time. Render frame. No, I blew it again. So what did I do? Oh, I have to invert it. Notice that the panes of glass are nice and smooth, but everything around it is crumply. So I'm on the right track. If I, you have to look carefully. Does everybody see that, though? So let's go ahead and abort, continue it. And let's select the turbulence one now, or rather the window panes, and let's invert it. Let's render it again. And did I goof it? Up. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Still isn't working. What do I have here? Here's my turbulence. Here is here are the window panes. Here's the alpha. Let me put it back up on top and let's try it again. Render frame. No, everything is everything is smooth. So that's not working here. <coughs> yeah, the alpha should be on top. Is it is it looking ripply a little bit? Well, I'm gonna let, let's um, crank it down a little bit. It's, it's one meter, so maybe it's not that ripply. Th this is where it gets kind of difficult f to figure with it. I'm gonna half half this instead of one meter. I'm gonna say 500 millimeters. Okay, on all axes here. So let's go ahead and abort this and try it again. I want to have it because I want it to look a little bit more ripply in here. So 500 millimeters, 500 millimeters, 500 millimeters. And I don't know, I'm, I'm guessing here. So I'm gonna render the frame again. Let's see what we get. No, 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 no. What did I apply it to? Oh, man. You're right. That's not doing anything. Thank you. <coughs> Let's go back to one meter. <coughs> i got to pay attention to what I'm doing. I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. So. <coughs> so let's go back and select turbulence. And this is the one that I should have changed. Thank you for being observant. Now let's try it. Let's render again. Let's see what we get. There we go. Perfect. See how it's starting to look a little ripply in here? Um, to make it look more ripply, see how it look how it's starting to catch light and look ripply. To make it even more look more ripply, what or to, to a sense of that it's a window. Windows are like mirrors, aren't they? And the reason I'm approaching it this way is you have to ask yourself these questions about surfaces. <coughs> well, 
they're, if they're like mirrors, then that means they have reflective properties. So that means I should add a reflection map. And then I have to ask myself, what do I want it to reflect? Could be something behind that I haven't created. It could be something in the scene. It could be anything. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to approach it the same way I have been doing this. I mean, you, later on, we see some other maps, and we add color maps and stuff. <laughs> these layers can be stacked yay high, you know, depending on how, how many of these things you want to add. <coughs> and each, you know, you'll, you'll need two for each feature. One is the cookie cutter, and the other is whatever it is that's being applied to it. Cookie cutter and whatever is being applied to it. So let's close this one. That's for the bump. So I'm pretty much done with my bumps. Let's go to reflection map, and I click T here. <coughs> Where do I want it to reflect? I only want it to reflect the panes. If I wanted it to reflect around the background or the whole thing, then just let it be the whole thing be reflective. But you have to ask yourself, what do I want it to reflect? I only want it to reflect the panes. So I'm going to go ahead and make this an image map planar. Go ahead, and I have already used window panes. And I can't remember now whether I have to flip it or not. If I flip it, you remember? No. Uh, no. Huh? Huh? Reflections. What did I pick? Oh, okay, never mind. <coughs> let's get it. Let's get rid of it, man. Hold down to get rid of one. Um, hold down the shift key and click on here. And boom. It removes it. I want reflection up here. Thank you very much. So I guess I probably want a little bit of specular highlight. Maybe 20. Glossiness, 40. Reflection, we'll turn that up to maybe 25 or so. Doesn't have to be super reflective in order to get across what we want to do. And I click T for texture. And we go ahead and again we want the window panes. Now I have to decide what I want it to reflect. <coughs> so let's add another layer. And we're going to turn this into our alpha, right? Because this is going to be the cookie cutter. <coughs> and then I go ahead and um, I, let's go ahead and reset. Reset. Um, let's go ahead and automatic size. There's a whole, you need to go through all these same steps again. You can copy, paste too. So we'll go ahead and copy selected layers. And we'll go ahead and we'll add, um, oh, sorry, we'll go ahead and paste and add to layer. Did I copy it? Yes, I did. Okay, so now I have the other one. I don't want an alpha. I don't want the bottom one to be an alpha. I want it to be normal. Oops. And now I have to pick an image. So instead of the window panes, I'm going to go ahead and load um, an image. And I'm going to get one that I should have copied a while ago. But I'm going to go into the hard drive, go into applications, go into LightWave 8, <coughs> content, classic content, images, and I'm going to scroll down to photos. Where is it down here? Tools, toys, reflection, photos, and let's have it reflect the river. It's a nice reflective surface. You get some of the sky in there. You get some of the water, which has some of the sky. It's nice. Okay. Now, I'm not sure how this is going to look. We just want this to look kind of shiny. So I'm going to go ahead and render again <coughs> and see what we get. If I really crank it up, you will really be able to see the reflectivity in here. And it's hard for me to tell at the moment. So I'm going to turn up reflectivity to really make it look reflective, and we'll see if it's working or not. So let's go ahead and render frame once again. And it's not, because this should look like a mirror. So let me go back inside reflectivity and let's select alpha. Let me invert it and let's see what we have here. Let's render frame. No, no, 
no, no. It's not working. Okay, I have window panes. Let me turn off invert. Planar. <coughs> oh, because here, here, let's select. Here, we do have that. It should be nice and shiny. Render flavor, normal, opacity 100%. No, it should be one meter. Hmm? It should. When I you crank up the reflectivity to a hundred percent, it should it should really look like a mirror. Just any amount of light at all should really turn it up. I'm trying to think of what I've done wrong here. Um. No. No, no, no. You need the transparency in the window pane. Um, I could turn it down a little bit. Let's turn it down to 60, but that's not going to help us. Let's go ahead and turn it down a little and see what happens. I mean, you do get a sense that it's there. Glass should be about 75, 80% um, transparent. Let me come back to that, make it work, because I could, might have to open up my other one. Um, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to go back to the color, and I'm going to apply wood on here. Okay? So it's only applied to here. It's not applied to the window or anything else. Um, so what I need to do, again, window, where I have color, I'll click here, and we'll take the window TGA. I'm going to wind up copying both of these. Let me start by selecting the silhouette. And I'm going to go for, no, let me go ahead and start by adding a new image map, a new image map here. And I'm going to apply the image map. I'm going to apply the blending mode, mode normal projection planer image. I'm going to load the image and it's going to be of the wood. Let me go back to my desktop because that's where I have it saved. Let's go inside or my window demo. Let's go back at images and here's the wood. Here's that planks of wood. Open it. And look what it does. It, it goes across everything, doesn't it? If I render it, now, that's not exactly what I wanted. It's covering up my window frame. It's not doing it where the transparency is, but, you know, it, it doesn't look right. So, looks kind of neat, but that's not what I want. Okay, I want the window frame to be revealed. So, what I need to do is I'm going to take this alpha and I'm going to make a copy of it. Okay, because I only want it to be revealed where the, the, the background, and I'm going to have to invert it. So let's first make a copy of this. Let's go ahead and copy selected layer. Let's go up here, and let's paste and add to layers, and let's render it and see what I did. And you know, It's wrong, but I want you to see what it did. Notice that it just applied it to the frame. So if I, w if I had a single, you know, image of wood that didn't have the planks in it or I wanted to change the scale of it, it could look like I have a wooden window frame if I wanted. I want it to look painted though. So what do I need to do to correct this? I just simply take the silhouette, it's the alpha, and I invert it. So now it affects the outside and you can see how it's updated and changed here. Let's go ahead and render frame again. And now it's only applied to the outside. And the glass is looking pretty shiny. I have this um, 
bumped away from the rest of the wall. I have my transparencies working. The reflections are sort of iffy. I should make them be able to crank them up to make them look almost like a mirror. So there's something that I have I've done that's in that's wrong. I can go ahead and select and have separate textures for each of these, which isn't a bad idea, so that I can control the size of the planks if I want to put them on there. That makes sense. So that the whole thing looks like it's uh, made of clapboards or it has wood siding. Um, something else I might want to do to refine it is to now turn, you know, as I'm refining the surfacing, add anti-aliasing. Everybody remember where you do that? Yeah. Make sure you have cameras selected. Go to properties, anti-aliasing. You can either select maybe five passes or classic. Um, <coughs> And you do the classic enhance low. It also comes out to about five passes. And let's go ahead and render the frame again. And we should see all the jaggies go away. Yeah. Do you want to adjust Oh, want me to move it and resize the window? Maybe you want to resize the window. No. <coughs> Unfortunately, does everybody understand the question? What if I decide to resize or move the window? I want to move the window in the upper left hand corner, bottom left hand, something like that. Wherever you have a map applied, you have to move it. Or they don't match up. So let me move one and show you what happens, that it's not going to work. Um, let's go back to our original. Let's, I'm getting confused myself. I've got to close some of this stuff. Okay, let's go back to the window, the original window texture. And I decide down here, the window TGI, I want to move it over and up a little bit. So we can change the position of it. And right now, the Z is set to my, my 100 minus 500. What if I just want to move it over and up a um, hundred millimeters? So what, let's go ahead negative 100 because I want to move it to the left. So minus one zero, hit the tab and minus, um, no I want to increase it so I want to move it up 100. So one, I don't want it meters. I want it millimeters. I've got to make sure that I change that. I want it to move it up 100 millimeters. <coughs> and I'll leave the Z alone. And let's re-render it and watch what happens. Notice how the image of my window has shift shifted over. look at the larger rendering. Whoops, I didn't let it render long enough. It didn't finish. Let me do it again. <coughs> I have, I shouldn't have turned on anti-aliasing so soon. I still have two passes to go. Now with only one light and a handful of things that we've done, look at how long it's taking. I mean, it seems like it's taking long because we're all sitting here you're attentive, you're looking at it, but it's not too long. You know, it's really less than a minute. Um, notice how the picture window has shifted. You see that? What if I were to do the same with the transparency? Watch what happens. Just, I mean, I'll do them. You need to do all of them. When you shift one, you have to shift them all. When you resize one, you have to resize them all so that they all match. Remember my hands is the example that they all are the same size and they're all aligned with one another. The same is true here. So let's go back out. Let's do the um, transparent map. And let's do the same thing. Right now the position is zero, zero, zero. I'm going to do the X. Remember I said minus 100 millimeters. Minus 1 and I want it to go up 100 millimeters, 100. Let 
this should be no, another M here. Okay. <coughs> so we're set. Let's render it and watch what happens. Now notice the frame or the picture of the window and the transparency match up, but notice the bumps don't match up the rest of it. See how when you shift one how the others are left behind? Do you see what happens? You still have one more pass to go and you'll probably see it better with the larger image. See how everything was shifted? It looks like the window is, the, uh, one is actually behind the other, but it actually it's just shifted up, it's sliding it up, the upper left hand corner. Okay, that's pretty much what I want to show you. I will look at the reflection map and then on Wednesday tweak it for you to see what I was doing wrong. Because I only want the reflection. Oh, what I could do, you know what I could do? Here, let's do this. Uh, now that I totally messed up my reflection, I'm going to put this back in the middle again. So let's make this zero. Zero. And let's go back here. I know where I can put it. I know where I need to put it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go back here. I didn't want to do that. Um, surface editor. Bring it back up. Let's go back to window. Let's look at our image. And let's again select this. And this needs to be zero, correct? And this needs to be zero. Be helpful to write some of these down, huh? Let me render it real quick to make sure that it's matching up. That looks good. Okay. N no? Yeah, it's working. It's working. Um, let me go back out. Let's go to environment and reflection map. None. Let's bring up our um, river image. And under reflection options, we can just use the spherical map. And oh my, <laughs> see how everything is incredibly, it, it just reflects everything now. But it's working. It, it's exaggerated, but it's working. So now we can go back. Did I remove the reflection map? I can't remember. Um, go back here to basic. Let's to go to reflection. Um, that's alpha. Opacity 100%. I turned up. Yeah, I told you I turned up. Here, let's, let's see. Let's invert this. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it should be only in. Let's look at it. It should it should only be inside the window panes. So it'll be, look like a mirror. Let's, let's do that. No, it's not working because it's, it's reflecting the whole image here. So I've got something else goofed up. But I, I mean, it's, I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. But you get the idea, I think. Let me um, tweak it because I'm using up my time here. I can I can keep going, I guess. So let's see where I messed up. The whole wall is reflected. Ooh, but it, I mean, it looks kind of interesting, but that's not what I wanted. Um, here's our image. That's I think that's right. We have that, our pane. Maybe this needs to be inverted. Or maybe... Let's invert the reflection and try it again and see what happens. There we go. That's what I did wrong. Now look at how shiny those windows are. They're like mirrors. They're just way too reflective. That's what I need to do. I need to ch put that in environment. So. Oh, I did it too soon. Render again. I thought it was done rendering. So the output from this part of the texture is a, a reflection of environment? 
Well, because that's the only place I have reflections added. Is in is, or in those window panes. Wherever I ha whatever surface has reflectivity, it will it will reflect that environment or that environment if I so choose. It is done now. Let's look. No, it still doesn't work because this looks too shiny here. So I goof something else up. But you can see how mirror-like this is. See how reflective it is? I mean, it's close, but no cigar. That's right. Let's come back to reflectivity. And it's set to 100%. Well, let's turn it back. Maybe 25, just uh, just a little bit, and it's still reflecting on the whole front. So there's something wrong here. If I invert it, let's try again. If I invert it, what happens? Maybe I shouldn't have inverted that before. Let's try it again. Render frame. Does that look right now? I think that looks right. No. Does the wood look shiny? Maybe I added on that surface that it had ref it was reflective too. Because it looks like the wood is sort of shiny and it shouldn't be. You know, the wood looks shiny, but this is cranked down a little bit. I still have it goofed up, but you get the idea. It's not quite working yet. So, um, just to let you know, I mean, you can see me fiddling with this. And what you're going to have to do when you're working on your toy is you're going to have to take the time and make sure that you don't spend all of your time modeling it that you spend an adequate time surfacing it, adding decals, textures like wood or pla making it look like wood or plastic or whatever the toy looks like. If you decide to do a teddy bear or something, I can show you guys early on how to do sass light and make it look furry. It's always fun to add fur to, to things. Okay. Um, so that's how that's done. That's how you take a single polygon and make it look incredibly more complex. You can do, you know, let your imagination run wild and you can add all kinds of things to this if you wish. Um, wish I knew what I was goofing up here. Well, I'll figure it out. Okay. Okay, rest of the day is work day. Um, finish up reboot if you haven't, email it to me. You know, get, I did wasn't able to do any grading this weekend, but um, I will this next. And also, um, if you have finished it and emailed it to me, then go ahead and start to work on your toy. And I see some of you already are working on it. That's great. Okay.